time, this moment, that we can give God glory. This is an opportunity that God has blessed us with that we are here to lift his name up. And it's a wonderful thing to know that God has allowed us to be here. And you know, none of this we have. You, you, every, every time that you, you, you enter the house of God, when you come together and gather in his name, we should never take it for granted. Because there's some places it's outlawed to gather in his name. Some places where if you come together because we're here and we have all this freedom where some people will be in some serious trouble when they come to lift up the name of Jesus. But we never know there may be a day, a day and a time like this now. But either way it goes, we still want to give his glory to his name to let the world know that we love God, we belong to God. You know, so I mean, we take every moment, every chance that we get. You know, and it shouldn't be just here. It should be at your house saying, God, this is your glory here, right here also. You know, this, 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 don't get to the point of let's get so caught up where we have to be here first. You know, like I often used to say, you know, when I come to praise God, I already have to praise God. Before I got here. You know, before I become here to worship God, I already worship God. In fact, I had a wonderful worship yesterday. Beautiful worship. I mean, that's just something that I just love, just to just to worship God and lose myself and think about him. You know, and I I I, I, I honor that, that little moment that I had. But I'm I'm already, you know, I'm I'm already wind up before I got here. I already have the praise in my heart. I have the song. I have the joy of the Lord in my heart. So it, it, it just, it's, like I said, this is just a continuum. This is just a continuum. It's already here. This is something that is a, just a part of me. It should be a part of all of us. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be to the point where you, you, you have your, a certain time all the time. Because sometimes you going to have to praise God when there is no time. Where there is no minutes that say, I got to schedule God in. It's just be a time where you say, you know, right here, right now. <laughs> right here, right now. You know, I remember when I was, let's just think about it. I remember I was seeking God for the Holy Ghost. I was like, Lord, fill my soul. I want to make sure that you fill me. You know, I'm not, I'm not satisfied with you constantly moving on me. I need you to fill me. And so I was praying, I was praying, I had to go somewhere, and something was giving me a, a moment to go home and pray. And I was like, I don't have time, I gotta go here, and I had a schedule, and I had planned it, I said, I gotta go here, and I gotta go here. But someone just had an urge in me to say, go home and pray. So I was like, I said, what, just for what, 15 minutes? What? I mean, you think 15 minutes is small to God? <laughs> I thought it was. I was measuring the minutes and the time because I'm like, because I'm, I'm, I'm a type of person, especially around that time, being single, I'm praying. I pray for hours. I pray for hours. I lost in prayer. I pray for hours. And I was like, 15 minutes. It wasn't a 15 minutes. Was I willing to be obedient to what he asked me to do at that time? So I was saying, you know what? I said, I'm gonna go home. I said, I called him. I said, hey, I said, I used to call him in the morning. The spirit didn't do nothing. I'm like, I used to call him at night. Spirit, but it's something said, go home. Get off work, go home. And then I told myself, I said, I'm gonna go ahead and go home. And when I went there, I began to pray, you know, and you know, I was praying, I was praying. And I said, Lord, here we go again. <laughs> I, said, I said, I've been asking you to move. I, I need to know of the truth. This is you right here coming right now. And I remember I, I had my Bible on the bed. I said, Lord, you said. 
I took the book on the bed, I was on the bed praying. I said, Lord, you say. I said, you say. You said, you say. They shall speak with no tongue. You say. I started turning to the book, Acts chapter 2, Acts 8, Acts 9. I'm like, Acts, I'm, I'm all over the book where, where the Spirit hit people. I said, God, is it your word? Like we was in a conversation. You say, Lord. I say, you say, this is your words. As I say, Lord Jesus. I say, you said it. And before long, the spirit hit me. It hit me. It was just like the scripture said. It was just like fire. It was just like fire. It felt like everything was lit up in the room, but no light. The only thing that was on fire was me. Hallelujah. The only thing was lit up. I remember in that room. It was bright was me. The spirit hit me. And before long, I started hearing. I said, oh my God, this is it. This is what you all been talking about. This is that. And I was like, I said, man. And it was over, I said, Lord, I've been coming. And you moved on 15 minutes. <laughs> 15, 15 minutes, Lord. So I rejoice. And I remember I called, I was calling people, I was like, you know, and, and the thing about it, what got people was, they had some people waiting on the Lord before me, and I don't know how this situation there or what the condition was. But I know one thing, it has to be to the point where you got to stay focused on it. It has to be a focus. And sometimes you get tired. And you get tired, but you know what? You have to keep constantly, continue to go to it. You get, yes, you, you know what? Let's, I'm going to read scripture here. Don't never think you would never get tired of doing what God wants you to do. I was tired that day. I was tired. Galatians chapter six. I was tired. I've been praying, I've been praying. And then I had a discouraging conversation with somebody. I said, I'm seeking the Lord. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm on my job. I'm like, I'm talking to God. I'm like, I'm calling on him. I'm at the house, I'm at the church, I'm at home. And then I get this discouraging conversation. They say, you need to be at the church. You need to be at the church for God to move. But I say, wait a minute. And I read a scripture that said, he fulfilled heaven and earth. He for, that means he's everywhere. So I don't have to just be here. I can be at the job no matter what. I can be on the ground. Still, I can call on God and he can hear me. So I begin to call on him and call on him. And no matter shadow of doubt, he moved. It's basically about the obedience. When it comes down to serving God, base is about the obedience. It's about listening to God. That's why the scriptures say the Holy Ghost is given to them that obey. It's about obedience. It's like somebody can say, I gotta get everything right. I gotta get everything right for the spirit to move on. I gotta get all this right. No, are you listening and being obedient to when he tells you when it's time to call? Are you being obedient? That's all it is. Is this if that's the case? If you have to get everything right, what is the purpose of the spirit? What is the purpose of having the spirit? You have to have everything at all. You got to constantly be having a mind to keep praying to God. You got to constantly have a mind. You got to 6 and all 9. You have a constant mind. You can't, it gets to the point where I know we get tired. We get tired. But the scripture here said at Galatians 6 and 9, it said, it says, oh, hit it. Let's start at verse 8. For he that sold to the flesh shall 
of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sowed unto the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. That's what my prayers was. I was praying and sowing. I was praying and sowing. I was praying and sowing. Kept praying. You would think all those prayers and all that time I was praying night and day, God didn't hear me? Because I used to say, Lord, yes, sir, Lord. I'm down here again. Hallelujah. I used to talk about, it's me again, Lord. It's me again. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, I'm praying again. It's me again, Lord. It's me again. I need you to bless me. Hallelujah. I need you to bless me. But the thing about it, your flesh get tired. Your flesh get tired. And sometimes you don't want to pray. Sometimes you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want to see God because of a simple reason. Because flesh get in it. Flesh sometimes, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. But I learned, you know what, in a sense, this, uh, I, I, I thank God this is very mean in my life. Because when I first met her around the time I was called in the spirit, she used to do the odd thing, you know. And I used to call her and talk to her. You know, I'm thinking, you know, I ain't going to say I was fresh out of the world, but I was still into, let me talk to you. Hey, what's happening, girl? You know, how you doing? <laughs> Let's talk about us. <laughs> when the first thing she did that hit me. Let's pray. It's not the way I thought it should be going. We supposed to be talking about us. <laughs> she, let's pray. And I'm like, I just got off from work. I ain't tell her I'm like, I just got off from work. I said, okay. We got on our knees, we began to call on God. She was seeking the Lord for the spirit. I got on my knees. I'm not my mother's praying. It just added more to me to pray when I don't want to. It basically was teaching me to pray when I don't even feel like it. I mean, I was calling on him, and I, it, 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 you know what I'm talking about? A prayer when you don't feel like praying, but you're still down there. You still going? That's what I'm talking about. That means you're going beyond. You're not reaping to flesh. You're reaping to spirit. You're going beyond how you feel. You're sowing to spirit now. Whenever you can pray when you don't want to, you're sowing in the spirit. Flesh don't have nothing to do with it. Flesh has nothing to do with it. Because flesh going to stop. I think he heard you enough. Then you play, play a long time last night. But it's something about when the spirit takes over the prayer. When you really get into it and you're talking to God. It's something about calling on God when you don't want to. So I learned how to pray in the midst of that when I didn't want to pray. I was already praying like that. But it was another step. Another step praying when it was, it was like, I didn't think about praying, but I'm going to pray anyway. It's like, I don't, I, I mean, it wasn't on my mind. It's, it wasn't something I was thinking about, but I know prayer is good. That's why I took it upon myself, I'm going to pray anyway. It doesn't matter what I'm doing or what I'm going through, I'm going to pray anyway. And so you got to condition your body to do the will of God. Because flesh don't always want to do God's will. There's a simple reason. You know how some people that get so spiritual, I always want to do what things for God. I always want to please God. I always want to make God happy. But here's the scripture here. Here's the scripture telling somebody something different. It said, verse 9, let us not be weary in well doing. So that let me somebody let me know somebody be tired. It's saying let us not be weary in well doings. That let me know you're gonna get tired. What God is telling you what to do, what's right. You're gonna get tired of doing the right thing. It's gonna be tired. I don't know how many people we get so spiritual. The scripture is real. It says let us not be weary. 
Because that's what we know. We're going to get tired to want to do the will of God. We're going to get tired sometimes. I don't know about nobody else. I'm being real here. There's going to be sometimes you just don't want to pray. Let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm always praying. Let's get real. Some days you just don't want to pray. I don't know about nobody else. I'm being real. Let's get me. You get tired. You get tired of doing the right thing. You just get tired. You get tired sometimes. You just don't want to do it. That's why the flesh does not give God glory. Because flesh don't want to do the will of God. You get tired sometimes. Yes, you do. I know I do. You get tired sometimes. You're loving people that don't love you back. You get tired sometimes. You get tired when you get all the ex all the exhaustion of love, and then you come out and find out they don't love you no more. They don't care about you like you care about them. You get tired. Yes, you do. I know I do. It get tired of showing kindness to people that don't like you. You get tired. Yes, you do get tired sometimes. You get tired. You get weary. You get frustrated. And the thing about it, sometimes you just don't want to do it. Let's be real with you. Let's be real. That's just sometimes that we don't want to do the will of God. Because why? We are weary. We are weary. Sometimes you just don't want to call on God. Let's just be real. I don't even, I'm tired. I had a long day. But the thing about it is this. We have to sow into the spirit. We have to lean on God. That's why Paul said, he said, you have to be a good soldier. You got to be willing to fight when you don't want to fight. You got to be a good soldier. You got to be willing to stand your ground. I'm not moving. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to stand for the Lord even if it hurts me. You gotta be a good soldier. And should just say, fight a good fight of faith. I'm not gonna stop. If I gotta fight you, devil laying down. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm looking to God. That's the problem. This is what the real problem is. Why we don't wanna always give the things, especially the love of God to other people. We focus on people. We focus on people. We focus too much on people. And every time we focus on people, we miss our blessing. Every time. Every time. Every time we begin. You know, it's funny how, you know, people, I'm not going to do this because they're not going to do that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. If the love of God is in your heart, it doesn't matter if they don't. That's how it goes. If the love of God is in your heart, it does not work that way. It does not go. If you constantly looking at people to serve God, you're going to miss everything God has for you. Whenever you look into the scriptures say, looking to the altar, you're supposed to be looking at him. You're supposed to be focused on who hates you. You're supposed to be focused on people that not know. You're not focused on people. Oh, they're not calling on God. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be looking to Jesus. That's why your eyes should be fixed. Your eyes should be on God. Your eyes should be on Jesus. That's all I see is Jesus. All I see is Jesus and me. That's all I see. I don't see no foolishness. I'm looking at Jesus. That's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to say, I'm, 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 if so much you, let me tell you, so much you drop your eyes down and look at that people, you could be walking to God. As soon as you drop your eyes, I go to trip. What just happened? I was walking so good because you begin to focus on folks. You focus on people, and every time you focus on people, it gets to the point where you miss what God trying to do in your life. You got to stay your eyes on Him. Every time that you look at people and you wait for them, it's about your growth. 
It's not about waiting on them to grow. It's about your growth. It's about how you want to grow and go. You know, you got to be the one to say, I'm going to take a stand. I don't care what you're going to do. I'm going to take a stand. Because as soon as you start looking at them and start following them, you get off track. You know what? We're going we, we to wrap the scripture on this one. Give me the book of Numbers. There was a man on his way to the promise. Book of Numbers chapter 20. There was a man. I mean, one of the men, a humble man, and he, listen, this man called by God to do a service for God, and something happened to him. Give me book of Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20, and it reads here. It reads here, Numbers chapter 20. <laughs> See, when you follow God, you look at God and listen to what his word says. You try to be obedient to his word. But when you look at people, it affects what you're doing when it comes down to serving them. For example, Moses. Scripture said, verse 10, 20 and verse, 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 verse 10. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together. It's a sad story. This is a sad story. Moses gathered together with, with Aaron. This is a sad story. They're on their way to the promise. The man that sacrificed everything about to give a speech and let them know. So what happened was, the scripture said, Moses, verse 10, and Moses and Aaron gathered together before the, before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, you rebellious, must we fetch your, must we fetch your water out of this rock? Then Moses lifted up his hand. And with the rod, he spoke the rod twice. And the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank. And their beasts also. And look what happened. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believe me not, sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. See what I mean? What happened when you focus on people? He was on his way. Almost at the end of the journey. But the people got on his nerves. He even said to them, Because of you. He told them, Because of you, I'm not going. Even though it was his fault still. It was his fault still, but he decided to listen to the people, pay attention to the people. He took his eye off God, and when he took his eyes off God, that's when everything fell apart. Everything fell apart. He said, because of oh, you, not just you, your brother too, because y'all failed to believe me. You lost your trust. You put your trust in people now. Because you put your trust in people, you won't go. You know how many people were following God and they paid attention to people and they wind up somewhere else? You know how many people that did that they had their trust in God, but they looked down and trust people. They lost that stand they had. Moses couldn't make it. Moses couldn't make it no more. But this ain't about it. See, this is the problem we don't understand. That most of the time, when we walk with God, we're going to have to fight for our spot. <laughs> we, a lot of people, they don't want to feel that. They don't like that. But you're going to have to fight for your spot. Because something is trying to knock you off the race. 
Something trying to push you from getting to Jesus. And anytime you have your mind made up, that's when it comes to the point where he zero, it was Satan zero upon you. And he said, I gotta stop this and let you get caught up into what I'm doing towards you. So he has to do something to make you focus on down here. You lose your spot and your place following God because now you're looking at people. You're looking at people. That's what we come down to. We're looking at people. We, but we can't, you, you can't give up. You've got to allow yourself to grow some roots in God. When you get, you, the scripture talks about being like the tree by the river. You've got to stand. No matter what if nobody wants to obey. You've got to stand for God. No matter what if your, if your children want to follow, my wife, if you